this is what we have to look forward to a preliminary Thailand versus Italy. Hey, I'm Brian. สำหรับการเรียนมวยไทยของท่าต่างชาตินะครับทุกวันนี้เนี่ยการการเรียนมวยไทยเนี่ยคนต่างชาติเนี่ยเข้าถึงมวยไทยมากขึ้นกว่าแต่ก่อนเยอะก็สําหรับการแข่งขันครั้งนี้นะครับก็เป็นเป็นทีมใช่ไหมครับก็ถือว่าเป็นสิ่งแปลกใหม่ของเกี่ยวกับมวยไทยก็ว่าได้นะครับก็คือทุกคนก็ต้องมีความสามัคคีกันต้องแสดงความสามารถให้ถึงที่สุดซึ่งถ้าคนไหนแพ้ก็สามารถทําให้ทีมเนี่ยแพ้ได้ All the Thai fighters, they are strong from from inside because 90% Thai fighters is from come from poor family, and they fight for family. That's really important. Right here we go, Thailand against Italy. Let's meet the teams. The ragazzi molto preparati, professionisti, si allenano con sacrificio in maniera costante. They have to be strong for themselves, but at the same time strong for the other fighters. If they want to go ahead with the tournament, they have to win by the team. La violenza esiste dove non ci sono le regole. Se le regole esistono e gli atleti si rispettano, sanno in che modo affrontarsi. Who can talk about violence? Only Indians. We train, we know the rules, we go inside the ring and we fight. This is wonderful. Not violence. And when you go out from the ring, you know the rules, and you know that the rules have to be respected. Thai guys are strong, as all the Thai fighters, and uh, we have to be care about them. The Italian team will, will front the Thai team with all the power that they have. We've had Spain so against Australia, now we're going to see Thailand. Thailand. Versus Italy. And the first up, we're going to see a little video about the first representative for Thailand. It's Rungawi Sasi Plamatini. I'm here in the village of Rungawi. I'm here in the village of Rungawi. ดีใจครับได้เอาเชื่อเสียงประเทศไทยมาถ่ายทอดศิลปะเมียนมาเมียไทยไปสู้ได้ยังไม่รู้ว่าเป็นทีมหรือว่ามาเตะสู้ได้เคยชกกันหมดเคยสัมผัส Fighting in the lightweight category for his country, Thailand, Rungawi Sasi Prapadim. Rungawi Sasi Prapa. An absolute legend in his country. Comes here with a, an enormous 125 fights behind him. And a bit of character, Rungawi Sasi Prapadim is in the circle. I always keep going because I always gonna get. I wanna get better. I don't wanna, you know, I don't wanna give up every time. Rungawi, <laughs> I've met him before. I uh, fought him in his hometown in Thailand in his own village. We drew, and uh, it was a good fight. It was live on TV. But I thought I didn't do my best. I feel that I've grew a lot since the last fight, and I feel that he hasn't. Yeah, I think I'm gonna win this time. <laughs> there we have it. He's 173 in height. In the lightweight category at 63 kilos, born in 92. From Italy, he's won 37 of his 61 fights with 13 knockouts, lost just 20, drawn four. I give you, also known as Mwai Farang, which means the foreign Mwai, Matias Gallo Casarino. And he might be just 22 years old, but he's already clocked up 61 fights himself, though. So, uh, 
Not even half as many as uh, Sassi Prapa, who he faces tonight. Perhaps the most uh, experienced man entering the circle for time in uh, the blue gloves. A Muay Thai exponent, of course. This crowd here, well, it's sizzling away. Great atmosphere. Our previous matchup, Spain beating Australia. In your time, and well, of course, it comes from Thailand. Uh, they are the masters. It's hard to see how the Italians will stand up against their experience tonight, though. They have some great athletes. Well, you've got a modified rule system here, Colin. Uh, Sassi Prapra, well, Channel 7 Stadium Muay Thai Champion 2012. The MTAA World Muay Thai Champion 2011 comes with that enormous pedigree, 125 fights, 85 wins, but we've got a modified rule system. So he's not really in his office, he's in the circle. And this is where Casarino might just be able to balance up that experience that Sassi Prapra has by bringing in the modified rule system to play in his favor. No elbows. No elbows. Presiding over proceedings here, experienced referee, you will be that. Now Sassi Papa in the, about to start this three three minute rounder. As the Thais and the Italians get their campaign in this nation versus nation contest underway for this lightweight clash. Italian Matthias Casarino. Hey. In the white, Run Gravi Sassi Prapa, who's only three years older in the blue. Well, three years older, and he fights Southport. So, already Sassi Prapa making life difficult for Casarino. Casarino puts a right hand in early doors, and uh, Sassi Prapa looks like he's going to come storming in right through the front door to try and put pressure on the young Italian. Casarino, though, good stylist good technical fighter blocking the guard w b blocking with the guard the kicks but Sassi Prapra starting to warm up here they're slow starters the tie ties used to going over five rounds but uh, Sassi Prapra will start to bring the action flowing through s round two round three let's see how this plays out Casarino well looking relaxed throwing some good strikes the ties they do learn their trade very young that's how he's clocked up so many fights, 125 uh, fights, 85 wins. Well, they did have a fight before. Moy Farang, as they call Casarino. So, uh, uh, the Thai foreigner, as it were. And uh, there was a draw. That was the result between the two. So, Casarino, a little bit more experienced now, probably fancies this. And interesting to see how both fighters having entered the circle for the first time, will adapt to this new style of fight sport. No corners. And, you know, it's always worth mentioning, you fight a Thai in Muay Thai in Thailand. Often uh, they take it a little easy on the Farang, as it were, the foreigners. That's how they do clock up so many fights. But now national pride at stake in the circle. Well, the power now of Sassi Prapra starting to come to the fore here. He's connecting solidly, and uh, Casarino having to take some big shots. We knew Sassi Prapra would come through the middle. Look at him just throw those shots in. Starts to bring a little bit of whip into the right hand. Casarino having to create some distance, but then having to work hard to get back in, and he does. Throws in a good little right hand there. So just keeping in touch with Sassi Prapra, but uh, just look at the relaxed swagger almost of the tie good little knee strike on the inside and that's a passive clinch under the rule system if you're active you can continue but uh, you will be there just checking these two and separating them good inside thigh kick but a left right left combination there from Casarino sharp as needles twice as bright sparkled lovely there on the 10 second clapper oh and a little bit of power just knocks Sassi Prapper back he won't like that coming into the bell 
Oh, just some wonderful well, combinations there from uh, Casarino. Well, they've called time. The referee hasn't heard it. And uh, both fighters raise their arms. A little bit of confusion in the circle there. And uh, what a swagger from Casarino. Hands in the air, hips forward, walks back to the corner. And, uh, well... You fight to the uh, referee's commands and to the bell. And both fighters continue. Massimo Rizzoli and Carlo Barbuto. Barbuto, uh, the other of the Italian coaches, four-time world kickboxing champion himself, world freestyle combat champion, and, of course, uh, known for his boxing skills. And we can see that Casarino comes to this with great skill set. And in prime condition, if anything, Sassi Prapa is carrying a little extra weight. And as a lightweight 63 kilo man, that's not a good sign at all. You can see the height differential as well. Seven centimeters it is. And what a great start. Casarino, confidence brimming here. Left, right, left combination, triple punches there, and uh, Sassi Prapra suddenly having to wake up and smell the coffee here. This is not a cake to be walked, and uh, Casarino standing his ground now, starting to put some heat behind those shots. There's no doubt in anyone's mind that the experience and the power lies with Sassi Prapra, but uh, Casarino has come here to do business. This is the circle, and this is where stand-up rules. Coming through brilliantly with his boxing skills so far. Again, the Italian getting through. Doesn't slip punches particularly well, Sassi Prapa. Soaking quite a few up. Well, you can see that Casarino has listened to the schooling of Carlo Barbuto, the Italian coach, that combat and boxing background that uh, Barbuto has. He's transferred to Casarino. Solid left hand there from the Italian something of a swagger in Casarino as uh, he delivers the shots, takes what comes out, calls on Sassi Prapra, but standing his ground centre of the circle. I think he's just a different man now meeting the man he had so much respect for. He's in his prime here, Casarino. He looks so good. Oh, and a brilliant knee coming through there, but didn't quite have the venom on it. Sassi Prapra managed just to slither away. Slipped round the back, Sassi Prapper, and you cannot take the back under the circle rules. No elbows. And uh, no blows to be delivered on the ground, but throws, sweeps, and takedowns. All acceptable here. Look at the knee strike there. Oh, but that was perfectly timed. Sassi Prapper takes his man down, slams him on the canvas. What a put down! What a reply from the tie. Could have done anything better there. And bought himself a little time after a, a couple of heavy punches as well. Under a minute left now. Unbelievable in this second round. And the pace has really started to step up. Southpaw Sassi Prapra starting to look for openings here. But uh, Casarino covered up tightly. Just manages to take the shots on the arms. Still comes in behind the guard. Still pushes forward. Nice little low tappy kicks and uh, brings it up high there, mixing it up beautifully, keeping Sassi Prapra guessing. I think a few of those punches have just woken the tie up now. It's such an <laughs> incredible ability to take a punch. Good, good, solid connections from Casarino. And, uh, you know, it has to be said that uh, the talk around the camp here pre-fight was the ties are tough, they're mean, and uh, the Italian team, well, you know, they, they look a bit sweet and dandy, but uh, I think they've confounded any questions as to the good looks that uh, the Italians might bring to this. And uh, look at that swagger back to the zone again as coaches Barbuto and Rizzoli rush in there to apply some advice. And, uh, and that would probably go along the lines of do not start showboating in front of Sassi Prapa because you just angered the man. Yeah. And with one round to go and probably two rounds up, this man is still a very dangerous customer. Oh, yeah.
And uh, as we said, tie rules, five rounds. It takes the ties just a little time to warm up, get into the swing of things. But across three, he might just have given Casarino an advantage. But he's buoyed the confidence of the young Italian. Going into the third, well, if Sassi Prapra starts to put on the afterburners, well, we could be... But can Casarino do it? Final of these three three-minute rounds. Casarino acknowledges the crowd. And a tap to his old friend. Now, that draw from the past between these two men at the moment. The favor to Casarino, surely for the first two rounds, the Italian in white. Sassi Prapa, the veteran. What can he do in the final three minutes in blue? We're already Casarino set out his score. He's coming behind those sharp hands, put in a good few teats, but he's coming in strong with the hands, relying on some body weight, and there's some heat. That was a good connection right to the sweet spot from the right. Casarino headhunting here, and uh, Sassi Prapra at this stage would have liked to have worn his man down with the low kick. He's not done that. In the clinch there, a bit of activity with the knees, a little bit like a, a hot scotch poker there from Sassi Prapra. Casarino, he, he's really putting the foot down here. He could just dance around, counter attack with that big reach advantage, but he really wants to have a convincing win over this man. He feels he's the better fighter, and with national pride at stake, it means so much to them. Well, what a feather in your cap. Run Gravi, Sassi Prapra. 125 fights. That's what Casarino will take with him if he takes the win. But in many ways, they start from scratch. It's 0-0 as an international team. And that is what the circle is all about. Who's going to start the campaign off with a victory for their nation? Casarino. The work rate, unbelievable. Puts that straight right. Right into Sassi Prapra. Sassi Prapra looking just a little bit spent here for a five-round fighter. Well, that's not a good thing. And the youth there of Casarino really starting to play a part in this. He's dropping his hands and blowing a bit. But that training of getting the hands back up is really coming into full. We can hear Massimo Rizzoli in the white zone shouting out to Casarino to keep the guard up. More of a stumble. And look at the reply. Sassi Prapra brings up the left leg. Under a minute to go in this final round. Casarino, perhaps the better fighter in the first two rounds. Sassi Papa has to start really going into full throttle attack here to get one over the Italian. Oh, and a great left hand through. So the Southpaw thought he could cause problems. Oh, and that was a cracking shot. Sassi Papa knows it. I think Sassi Prapa took his foot off the gas because uh, he saw that Casarino was a young fighter, but Casarino availed himself of every opportunity. Spinning, spinning back fist, he manages to land it, and then Sassi Prapa complains that there's an elbow strike there, and uh, he apologizes for it. Casarino says it was unintentional, and that's the change in the rule system that all fighters have to adapt to. He apologizes unreservedly. Sassi Prapa outraged that uh, he should be uh, taken advantage of like that. But Casarino, in true honor and warrior fashion, apologizes profusely. Well, I mean, looking against the same man you fought before, I, I think it was just flashback time there. Well, the crowd giving it up for both these fighters. What an entertaining outing for the first bout of this second quarter final. Well, Casarino, he could have made a few enemies there with that, but I think he redeemed himself. Though, uh, perhaps the last 30 seconds of the fight was killed off a bit there. Well, throughout the whole proceedings, it wasn't that far apart. How will the judges favor this? I think. Every round, Casarino had a slight advantage. Just in favor of the tides. First fight there in Thailand against Italy. Just waiting for the results to come in. Well, is this one a little confused? Final, final round. How will the judges see the mistake from Casarino? Well, tense moments as the uh, official verdict being delivered. Casarino taking the opportunity to apologise. Uh, Sassi Prapra 
maybe had a little tooth work loose there in that accidental strike. Yeah, if it hadn't done damage, it, it would be easily uh, forgiven. There's a divided uh, this, uh, opinion there between the judges, but allowed. Uh, on point for a divided vision, the victory goes to Matthias Gallo Casari from Italy. Well, the Italians done it. Casarino takes the win. Sassi Prapra, absolutely outraged. But Matthias Gallo, Paul Ferrand Casarino takes the first win for Italy. And that's just a little bit churlish from Sassi Prapra as he leaves the uh, circle. But uh, the win is the win. And undoubtedly, Casarino put in the performance there that persuaded the judges. Well, how could you not forgive a man? He couldn't have apologized any harder, and he fought so valiantly throughout. It was a brilliant matchup. Sassy Papa certainly bettered on our scorecards throughout. An absolutely relentless boxing performance there from Casarino. Great hands. Sassy Papa had his moments, but I think too slow to get going. Needed to get up, get out, and put up. Well, in the heat of the battle, the violation happened, but still the victory went to Italy. 1-0 so far on the night.